out. Take it home, man. Good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all of my peoples. And welcome to Tony Commander J.R. Kropokpa Chesson Talk Show. This is another day, and this is another lesson. So let's get into it. Yesterday I talked to my young people, and I told them that I was going to spend some time teaching them about our society, about our government, about leadership, because as young people, as youth of our nation, they have responsibilities as well to our society, to our future, to parity. So I told them yesterday I dealt with the essence, the three stages of life, because I wanted to clear that out of the way. Now we're going to get into what is our system of democracy? What is our system of capitalism? How do these two systems relate to our constitution and our laws? Let's get into it. Our system of democracy is based out on our constitution. Our constitution is the law that all of us agreed upon when we signed and voted on the law that is called the process of ratification. When all of us agree that this constitution is the constitution we accept. That is done after the president sets up a constitution committee. The constitution committee goes and review the constitution and write it. Then they take it and give it to the legislature. The legislature reviews it and sends it back to them with their approval and they sign it and, they, and then they put it out to the public for us to vote on it. That is when we ratify it to become law, okay? So once we vote on it, and it is passed as a law, as the constitution of the land, now we go through the process of implementing the constitution. And how do we implement the constitution? We implement the constitution by setting up a system that allows us to follow the mandates of the Constitution. In the Constitution, it says we, the people, have the power above our whole government. We, the people, came together to form this government to pursue a perfect union. So this government is subjected to the people. We are the first power of our country. When we come together, 
unify and make statements and vote and speak. We are the voices that make the government what it is. So for the, for the government to carry out the, mess, the mandates of the Constitution, they have to set up a system to implement that process. And that's where we get our system of democracy. Our Constitution says we need a president. Our Constitution says we need X number of legislators, legislators representing the various counties and states of our country. Our, countries, our Constitution says we need two representatives from each state to represent the people from the state. Our Constitution says that we need branches of government to carry out the, 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 the implementation of the laws and processes of the Constitution. So all of this, our government, our system of leadership, our processes of leadership, everything comes flows from the Constitution into our system of democracy, which is formed to carry out the mandates of the Constitution. That's where our democracy comes from. And in our democracy, our Constitution affords all of us one vote as a citizen of the Republic of Liberia. So we have one vote under the Constitution. Under the Constitution, it also man mandates that our government provides the ways and means for us to pursue our own individual happiness. So, what does that mean? The government has to set up a free market system where we can involve in ourselves in to promote ourselves. When that comes to our financial status and our financial abilities to garner wealth and things that puts us in the era of economic sustenance and an economic system called the capitalism. Why? Because once we generate all these goods and finances for our personal means, the government has to help us get it out, has to help us promote it, has to help us market it. So these are the avenues that we go through. That what we have our stock exchange, our different different uh, 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 means of selling the goods of the people, or putting it out there for people around the world to come and buy. That creates a system on its own of marketing. We call that the capitalist system, where in our system, the individual is allowed to excel as much as he can and be all he can be. What differentiates differentiate us from communism and socialism is that in those systems, their constitutions limit their abilities to the will of the party and the will of the government, the system. So there is no free will in those systems. Everything in those consistent in those parties are controlled by the party in those in, in the so communist and socialist system is controlled by the party or the leadership for the whole of the country. So there is no idealistic and uh, principle of individual uh, wealth. Okay, to the extent that you control your own wealth. You can make your own wealth. No, there are limits in the socialist and communist system. Why? Because those systems are built for the masses of the people. They are built to promote the interests of the masses of the people and not the masses of the few. So those people who garner wealth and things in, those, in, those, in that kind of system are controlled by the party. You know, they can get wealth, they can, they can excel, but there's a ceiling to everything. How much the party wanted to keep their rich, how much the party wanted them to control everything, the party controls all of that. And you have to remember in the government system, the government does not have the technology to control everything in the country. So for those people 
who can produce. The government let them produce. That's how they become rich. But the government controls everything they produce, the manner in which they produce it, the wealth they get. The government can intervene into that and control it. So everything is not free in this country. You survive and prosper and grow at the will of the government, of the will of the people. So, same thing in every country. It's just that under democracy, we don't limit you from how much you can get, how much you can sell, how much you can build, you know. But in communist country, the government can tell the, 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 the owners, the company, we don't want you to do this right now, we want you to do that. And they don't really have to go through any legal process. The party makes the rule, it comes down, it's the law. You can't debate it, you can't argue it, you can't fight it. You gotta follow it. So you have limited freedom on your production and your maintenance, and there's a cap on how much you can make, unlike the democratic system. So that will make our system so great. In our system, the individual has a right to excel and, and exceed as much as he can once he follows the law and pays his taxes and do, does his share to, to make his contribution to the government. As an individual, he can make anything he wants to make. That's why in, in America we have so many million years and bil billion years, and, and etc. That is not in those other countries. They are controlled by the government. So all the oligarchs and all the people that are, are part of a small system with money and things like that, they make up the party. They make up the leadership. They make up the government. And the government is so involved in the lives of the people that they control everything. You know? They can like that you could reach to the point they want you to reach and they stop it. And it's the rest for the people. So there is no real freedom. No real individual freedom. And the only thing that differentiates us in, the, in our constitution is in our amendments and in our laws. In the American Constitution is amendment, but in our constitution we put it in our laws of how our country should function. Uh, what kind of rights and freedom you can have. And you know in our constitution the individual is given a lot of freedom. So that what makes our constitution so great. That what makes our system of democracy and capitalism so great. Liberia doesn't really have a capitalist, capitalist system because we're not really producers of, 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 of wealth. You know, we depend on other people. We are still a dependent country. So we fall on everything other people have. But you see, those countries that produce, America, Japan, France, all the countries that produce, they have their own stock markets. They have their own system of, of trade. They have their own system of democracy, of, of capitalism which is different from socialism. Socialism, they're part of so, uh, social capitalism, maybe. You know, they can, they, uh, there's always a, this social, this social, that. But for democracy, it's the individual. It's the company. Their, their, their abilities to amass wealth to themselves. You know, that way you can be as wealthy as you want to be in this country, as long as you, you, for, you, 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 you satisfy your taxes. It's the only thing that it shows that you fulfill your obligation to the country by paying your share of taxes. And once you pay your share of taxes, the government has no control over you. You can go out and make money and do anything you want to do. Once you don't try to be corrupt and hide your money and don't pay your taxes, now that's a problem. But once you're paying your taxes, you're meeting your obligation to the state, everything can be yours. Okay? So that was, that's why our system is so great. And in our system, the greatest thing is it affords all citizens the opportunity and the right 
to pursue any position in our government. And that's why we, we, our system fixes so that one person does not stay over a certain number of period. Because when you stay over a number of period in the leadership, you deprive other Liberians who want to pursue that interest to lead our country too. The democratic system is a fair and equal system that based upon our constitution. Everybody has a right to lead the United States of America. Nobody is beholden to a party or any select group. Yes, we had that under Tottenham and, and years ago we had one party system. But as long as our legislature got together and passed the multi-party system and the president approved it and it became law, we cannot go back to that one party system. Except uh, the masses of our people accept it. But our system now is affording every Liberian the right to pursue the position of president, representative, and leaders of our country. So if we go against our constitution and say one person should stay there beyond the constitutional term, we have destroyed our sense of constitutional democracy. We have destroyed the fabric that put our country together to make it fair, equal, and just for all our citizens. Because no man is entitled to be king in our country. No man is entitled to rule on his own will. No group of people are entitled to usurp the powers of our country onto themselves. Usurp means to take, to, you know, to do. So illegal to take or overpower or control, you know. So nobody has a right to do that in our country. And that will protect us from kings and queens and having one person come over us and control us forever. Look at like Donald Trump now controlling America. Look what he doing to the immigrants. Will we want to be on that kind of man forever? For 20 years? No. No, no. Because his kind of leadership does not benefit all of us. And the only saving grace we got to stop us from going to war and killing each other and fighting to bring the system down is our abilities to go to the polls and vote. After every term of the presidency. So after every set term. And that will checks our leaders. One, they know they cannot rule forever. Two, they know they only got two terms. They are limited. After those two terms, they finish. They can't come back. So, if you want to leave a legacy, you got your first term to leave that legacy so that people can give you the opportunity for a second term. And if you cannot fulfill what you want to fulfill within those two terms, you're done. Your party can carry on the idea in the next standard barrier they elect. And that is very significant, my Liberian children. We don't want no leader that will sit over our country indefinitely. We don't want no leader that will come there and disdain our presidency, disdain our leadership indefinitely. Our constitution gave us the rights to make changes. Nobody is indispensable. That means we do not depend on anybody to do everything for us and say they're the only person they can do it. No. Even Barack Obama, one of the most educated black men in the world, had to give up the presidency of the United States. George Washington, the man who fought for this country, after two terms, he had to give it up. And he did it out of free will and love for the system that we have agreed upon. And that's what makes us a great people. When we have a system 
that order us respect, order us honor, and we ensure that this system provides our constitutional needs of food, shelter, and clothing. Those are our basic needs of every society. Our government got to make sure we got fed. They got to make sure we have shelter. They got to make sure we have clothes on our backs. And how do they do these things? They provide the avenues for us to be employed, to find jobs, to be given opportunity, not only in government, in the private sector. The government is not there to employ everybody in our country. The purpose of the government is to be there, to be the administrator of the nation, to find jobs, to open avenues for us to work, to, to direct us to a crisis and tell us what to do, to provide the protection and the security needed for us to pursue our happiness in peace and stability, in protection against criminals and criminal activities. That's the responsibility of our government. The youth of our country have no rights going out in the street and demonstrating and, and fighting for our country. No, you people are the children of our country. You're supposed to be in schools. You should be preparing yourselves for the future. And we are not doing that today. Our youth have fallen behind so badly. And our leaders continue to fail our youth and use them as stooges to fulfill their own wicked political agendas in our nation. It has been going on for over 40 years. We have been through a civil war for this and all. Our people have died unwar unwarrantedly from diseases and things that we have invented in our country. Our country is a death trap for our people. Diseases, the sicknesses, the dirt, the stench, they're not conducive for our people. Our leaders have not taken our lives seriously. Our leaders are the same warlords from the 1990s still leading us today, and that is not right. America knows it's not right. And for America to sit down and condone the warlords controlling our country and they know our people are backwards and have no means of changing the evil leaders among us because they know these people will keep the rest of us in exile because they, can't, they are not competent as the rest of the Liberians in abroad. So they will do everything to stay in power use our system to enrich themselves, use the wealth of our country to enrich their families. This is not right. You young people are the future of our country. You young people are the destiny of the new Liberian nation. You young people have a grave responsibility today. You are in a majority. and You have to pay attention to harmful messages. You have to understand that our country is all we have. We cannot persist on this path of ignorance, disease, and poverty. We have to rise up and change it. We have to listen to our leaders and people with one voice in the diaspora. We have to rise up and ensure that these corrupt leaders in our country are brought to justice. We don't need no war crimes court. We didn't need no foreigners coming to our country and, 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 and implementing the laws that are our laws. We are men and women of our own nation. We are the leaders and the definers of what Liberia is to the world. We cannot neglect duty and responsibility to our ancestral dreams, desires to this day. My young children, time of the Liberian people is here. You all deserve better than running around with this munya munya business. You all deserve to be in school. You all deserve to be preparing your futures for the near future of tomorrow. 
We should just down the road. College is not hard. School not hard. Yes, I mean, it's hard, but it's short. What is four years of college? You got to put yourself in the book. What is three, four years of high school? You got to put yourself in the books. You got to understand that your survival is not the survival of George Weir. Your survival is not the survival of Jefferson Koji. Your survival is your survival. And you have to stand up for your own integrity, for your own rights, for your own dignity and pride. It's like being on people. Remember, the own children, repair your lives. Put yourselves together. Demand this government do something for you. Your need for educational schooling, not so much the formal schooling. Right now, at the stage you people are, you need to learn a trade. You need to be able to go out there and make your own money. And this government is not providing it for you. And you cannot sit down and talk about keeping a government in power beyond their constitutional limits. We are here to ensure that all of us benefit country. And one person, one leader is not the choice of the Liberian Constitutional democracy is the foundation for the upliftment of our country. For too long, we have neglected our laws, we have neglected our society, and paid attention to people, individuals, children. Tony J. R. Kopokba Chesson is here to enlighten you, to bring to your forefront of your consciousness what you need to know as Liberian youth. And today, you need to know that this government has failed you. You need to know that Ellen Johnson Sheriff and George Weir have taken your youth away from you and made you servants to their evil desires. Rise up, my children. Rise up. Your education is the primary foundation of your lives right now. If you can't go to school to get high school degree, to get college degree, you need a vocational school in Liberia now to teach you the skills to make money. And start running behind this stupid, useless jobs we are in a moonya and moonya business. And it's done. I wish you all well. And I want to know, you to know that you are Liberian youth. And you have people here that care about you and care about your survival and everything that has to do with your livelihood. Good morning. Tony Commander Chesson is here. Take care. Yeah, man. Take care, my people.